Hello, Internet. I'm Wingsome, and today I'm going to show you how I made this neon sign. I love the look of retro neon signs, like the kind that you see in old diners or outside of theaters. And I've been wanting my own, but I don't want to pay somebody else to do it, especially since I want to control its look. So I was really excited when I saw this video on Adam Savage's Tested Network explaining how you can use these LEDs embedded in silicone to mimic the look of neon signs. I'll link the video in the description below. My design is inspired by this pin I got off of Etsy, which is also linked below. This pin is so cute, and I feel like it works really well for the design of a neon sign. So I've been thumbnailing around the same idea, the same phrase for a little while, trying to work out some colors, and I ended up with this as the final design. Since I'm going to be using a laser cutter to cut the frame for this sign, I need to convert it into a vector graphic, which you can see here. I'm using Adobe Illustrator for this. You can see the wider pink, yellow, green, and blue lines represent LED strips. I'll need to cut grooves in a layer of wood to hold the LED strips in place. I calculated the groove width using the 72 pixels per inch resolution of the vector file and the six millimeter width of the LED strips. Plus I added a little bit of wiggle room leading to a 17 pixel width for those strokes. I added an outline for the edge of the sign and I added hole markers for where I would need to poke wires through to the back at every strip end and at any sharp angles. Finally, I used Adobe's outline stroke tool to create the paths the laser cutter will follow. You'll notice there's a big red line through the center and that's because the size of the sign I want will not fit in the laser cutter, which means I'll need to split it in two for cutting but the heart wants what it wants, so without thinking at all about the eventual circuit I'm gonna need to make, I've just decided to go for it. So I actually would like to get some soldering done while I wait for the wood glue to dry, which means that I need to cut these flexible LED neon strips into the right lengths so that I can work on that soldering while I'm waiting. Um, so I'm just going to fit them into these grooves here to get the right sizes, uh, get the right lengths. And actually these grooves ended up being a little bit wider than I had anticipated or really wanted. So I may end up recutting the frame that keeps all the LED strips in place. Uh, we'll see what it looks like when it's all dried and put together. Um, and then, you know, if I decide to recut the frame, then it, it should be the same lengths, just with a snugger fit around the LEDs. Uh, that's besides the point though. Once you get the right length of LED strip, you can uh, just kind of cut these silicone strips really anywhere. There are these little line markings along it to indicate where there are little pads that you can solder wires to. Um, but I originally followed the tutorial from the uh, Adam Savage's Tested Network, and they actually recommend cutting a little past that line so that you have a little bit more space to work with. Um, so that is the advice that I'm following uh, when I do this. And then in order to keep track of everything, um, I've actually numbered all of these segments and I'm just going to write on the back of it so that I can keep track of them uh, and not get them all mixed up, make my life a little easier later. <laughs> I'm realizing that I really should have a couple of test pieces soldered together to make sure that the wood frame fits at least close enough before I would glue it together. So that's what you can see me doing in this time lapse here. It's
It's difficult to see when I'm soldering, but I have these separate shorter pieces of LED strip and eventually I want them to all connect together and behave as if they're all one LED strip. And the way that you can accomplish that with these strips is um, because they allow you to sort of cut and re-solder together, you just want to make sure you keep track of the direction that the strips came in. Um, I do that with just a little sharpie arrow and then there are these little copper pads on the inside there where you can solder and you can basically take wire make sure those directions match up and connect the top pad to the top pad and the bottom pad to the bottom pad and then it will behave as if it is one continuous strip just like this. To make my life a little bit easier, I've decided to use these connectors. You may have seen them in the clip before of me soldering, but basically it means that instead of soldering straight across, so like I was explaining just now, you solder those pads together, you could just do it with some wires like this, but I wanna be able to easily swap in and out these strips in case I accidentally mess up the circuit, which I'm almost definitely going to. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna solder this connector onto this side like this, and then I'm gonna solder this connector onto this side, like this, and then I'll be able to connect them together and it should also behave as one long strip. Because I'm able to cut all of these to smaller strips and then reconnect using connectors like this, it means that I'm not limited to a single color of LED strip. I can connect multiple different colors together in order and make a multicolor design like I'm intending to do. You may remember that earlier I said that I might recut these grooves here because the fit was not as snug around the LED strips as I had been hoping. Well, I'm really glad that I soldered together all these test strips because what I've realized is that these silicon end caps here that I'm using to cover up my soldering on these leads, it actually is wider than the LED strip itself. And what this leads to is that when I actually put this into these grooves, it fits really nicely with the width of the groove, which I of course had totally planned for and definitely did on purpose. Anyways, the point is that it fits, so I'm gonna glue everything together. it out it's been glued together and i was a little bit worried originally before i glued everything together because the wood was so warped and after i cut it it warped almost even more because there wasn't as much wood to combat that uh bending but weighing it down underneath all of our emergency water and wood gluing it all together it it worked out the pieces fit together and it's nice and flat now so next thing I wanna do is, first of all, a little bit too liberal on the wood glue. So I do need to sand around the edges a little bit to make sure that uh, it's nice and even. I mean, I guess nobody's gonna look at them, but you know, pride reasons. Also some of the holes that I'm gonna wire through uh, have a little bit of wood glue in them as well. So I'm gonna need to clean those up a bit so that there's enough room for wire to go through. And then on the other side, there's some spots where the wood has just kind of chipped off just a smidge. And I want to sand over those to make sure that they're nice and smooth and the back panel matches the front panel. So here we go.
This is Links I'm from the future. I'm just popping in here because while I was editing this video, I realized that my explanation for the circuit here was completely nonsensical. So I'm just re-recording that section in order to make it hopefully useful. After I was all done sanding and sealing the wood, my partner pointed out that I should really check the current rating for the wires that I'm using. And turns out he was totally right. Uh, you probably remember from truly moments ago, these little connectors that I was using to assemble the strips all together. Well, basically these wires have a two amp current rating and two amps is, you know, a fair amount of current. But the thing about these LED strips is that the more LED strip you use, the more current it draws. And because I'm using a lot of LED strips because I made a really huge sign without really thinking about the circuit consequences of it, it means that I need to make sure that I've worked out a circuit that will not subject any of these wires to more than two amps of current. And the reason that we want to do this is because these wires are so small and if I put too much current through them, they just might get way too toasty. And nobody wants to have a fire hazard in their home. So I got all of the lengths of the strip sections that I have in the sign by going back to Adobe Illustrator and using the object properties tool. Once I had all of the lengths for the LED strip, I was able to determine how much current I was drawing in total. And I split up the current that I was drawing in total by making multiple sections in parallel. So each parallel section was only drawing a certain amount of current. Now that's all good in theory, but you may be wondering how physically does that look on these LED strips? Now to put strips in parallel, if you have two sets of soldered strips like this with their positive and negative leads coming out the top. You're going to tie all of the positive ones together and put your power through those positive ones and then tie all of those negative leads together and that'll be your ground side. For the in-series piece, you've got all this. You're going to want power to come from this side. It'll go through this whole LED strip and come back and then this negative lead here should connect to the positive lead on the next strip. And that way, your two LED strips will be in series. To power this whole thing, I have this adapter brick here, and it supplies 24 volts and 5 amps. Now, the 24 volts is actually more than the LED strips are supposed to be powered by. These LED strips, according to their spec sheet, should be powered by 12 volts. If you put two LED strips of the same length in series with each other and then power those two by the 24 volts coming from this power adapter, it will actually lead to 12 volts going over those equal length sections. I want to be able to increase or decrease the brightness of my sign once it's done, so I got this dimmer brighter to put into the sign and it attaches very nicely to this end of the power brick right here, just like this. But now I need to attach this end to all of my LED strips. And the way I'm doing that is by using this little adapter here. You can see on the end, there's these two little metal points and that's where you can insert two wires and then screw down at the top to clamp them in. And essentially it converts that power output from your power adapter plus dimmer brighter into wires that are compatible with the wires in your circuit. So I'll put this on the end of my dimmer brighter like this, and then the wires that come out of here will be the ones that I feed into my circuit. I'm not gonna explain the circuit in the video in full, but if it's something that you're interested in, I'll put it up on screen right here, and you're more than welcome to screenshot it for later study and to adapt it for your own purposes. Now that I have taken all these LED strips, soldered a little connector onto them, figured out the wiring diagram so I know how this wiring is all going together, I am going to go through. I want to make sure that each of these strips turns on before I glue them in, just like that. Um, and then I'm going to glue them. 
So I forgot to film myself gluing all of those LED strips in place. Instead, here's a photo of me conducting the stress test to make sure that the wires could handle all the LEDs. They've all been put together in a long section, plugged in, and the good news is they stay an acceptable level of toasty. All right, y'all, we are almost there. As you can see from the absolute plethora of wires here, I have now successfully glued all of those LED strips in place and pulled their connectors through these holes into the back and connected them up so that they are all connected in the right order. Next for me is I am going to take the power and the ground wires from each of those in parallel sections from my circuit diagram. I need to connect those all up together and then connect them to the power and ground of the power adapter. So in order to do that, I also have this RF wireless uh, dimmer brighter, and I'm hoping that that will work um, between the power adapter and my circuit. And after that, I'll do a little bit of final sort of wiring, tidying, adding the mounting uh, hardware for this thing to get hung up on the wall. Um, and then it should be finished. Stay tuned for the result. Moment of truth, I have everything wired. Time to plug this thing in to our 24 volt, five amp power supply and uh, see if it all worked. Yay! Oh, yay, it works. Oh my God, it actually looks really good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so. Wow, we are so close to actually putting this up. Why don't we now add some mounting hardware to the back, um, maybe add the dimmer switch in, we'll see if it works or not. I'm actually not sure if it supports the amount of LED I have going on here. And uh, uh, the next thing you'll see is me showing this off in its rightful home. At the end of every project, I like to reflect on what could have gone better. From this project, I take away a few things. One is to plan your circuit before you start cutting things. Two is that if you're going to use these specific LED strips, you should plan your sections to round out nicely to about an inch with a little change. That's where the little copper pads are available for being soldered. And three is to just generally go easy on that wood glue. Friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. Uh, and you, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you again soon. Bye! Uh-oh.